Hello, my name is Mateusz and this will be about <coughs> a more declarative approach to accessing collections in Elixir. Uh, I'm going to start with a disclaimer that uh, the approach I'm going to show is not as battle tested as uh, GenStateM, uh, is rather what I uh, created when I had a free evening and uh, because I had some uh, problems I discovered in, in our code uh, in Membrane. And um, I'm, I'd like rather to share some ideas and uh, show the problems and how, can be so how they can be possibly solved. But it's all rather an experiment and um, maybe invitation or um, uh, trying to encourage you to experiment with such stuff as well. Uh, so let me start with an example. <coughs> Let's say we have a list of users. And this actually can be a list of anything that can be identified. So here we have an ID. And uh, we convert that uh, list to a map and where the keys are the IDs and the values are users. So that we can easily access uh, users by the ID, like here. So we pass an ID and we get a uh, Bob. So uh, I have a question to you. Uh, have you ever wrote a code like this or seen a code like this in Elixir or any other language? Okay, a couple of you did. Oh, actually, a lot of people did. So maybe you have an answer to another question I have. Uh, so this code is supposed to find a user that uh, is named uh, Bob, as we did before. But here we want to find him by his nick. And will this code work? Or will this code not work? Okay, a couple of you guessed only. Uh, that, that's make me a bit sad, but uh, of course it won't work because uh, actually we're iterating over a map, not over a list. So each entry of a map is a tuple that has an ID and um, that has a value, and it also will return a tuple. <coughs> so you may notice a first problem here. Uh, only because we created a map, because we wanted to access users by, by their ID quickly, we need to change the way we are looking at the entire collection. But uh, anyway, this will work. Um, the only problem with this, it, the, it can take some time if a list of users, or map in this case, is quite big. Uh, because it takes linear time, it has to iterate over all the users potentially. So if we wanted to speed it up, we can do that for example like this. So we create another map that um, has user nicks as keys and their IDs as values. And then we can retrieve user ID quickly by his nick and then we can get the actual user passing the ID. Uh, so far so good. <coughs> the problem be be begins when we, want to when we want to delete a user from this whole structure. So we n not only need to delete uh, them from the users, but we also need to delete them from user nick to ID map. And uh, moreover, if Bob uh, happens to change his nick, we also need to uh, do we, we also need to uh, think about both of these maps and any other that we would create and update everywhere whatever changed. Uh, <coughs> so I had these exact problems uh, a couple of times. So I created a simple library that um, tries to solve that. Uh, so it's called IDX <coughs> and uh, let's see how it can help. So we can create an instance of IDX, passing a user's list as we did before, and pass a lambda as we did before, but, but here it only returns the key, not the, any tuple, and it returns the key that is supposed to be used to access users. So then we can, get, then we can call IDX get, just as we called map get, and it returns um, our user. Well, what about finding uh, a user by nickname? Well, this code, which I think is quite idiomatic, works in this case because the entries of the collection are users, not uh, tuples or anything else. <coughs> um, what about speeding that up? So um, this still takes linear time. We want to access Bob hopefully 
in a constant time. Uh, so let's see what can we do. So IDX provides a functionality called indices and uh, a function called create index. So we can create index on users. We can call it uh, this index anic and pass a function as we did in idx.new. And in this case, the function will return the nick because we want to index by nick. So then we can get a user by their ID as we did before, and it still works. But we can also use this syntax to retrieve user by their nick. And this works in constant time. So we don't need to manage uh, another maps. We don't need to manage tuples. Uh, we, need, we don't need to think every time how exactly the data is structured. At least that was my intention. Uh, so <clears throat> another question is, which approach is actually better? I said that uh, uh, enum.find requires linear time to run. And uh, by index, we can access users in a constant time. However, <clears throat> there is a trade-off there because managing indices, for example, when we update values, uh, also takes time. The complexity, like computational complexity, remains the same. But if we more often uh, update users than we access, the, access them by the unique, it may be more profitable and uh, better in the end to use enum.find. <clears throat> That's why uh, IDX provides a feature like, uh, that is called lazy indices. So we can pass an additional argument lazy and set it to true. And thanks to that, uh, this access will work the very same. Both examples will work um, in the same um, complexity. And this new lazy index won't uh, add any uh, overhead um, when we change when we are changing the users when you are adding them uh, so <clears throat> um, if we benchmark our code for example and it happens that the one way is better than the other then we can just uh, add or remove the lazy argument when creating the index and accessing the collection will remain the same great uh, let me uh, go to another part of the presentation, which is about uh, having more than one collection. Uh, so <clears throat> let's say we want to group our users in a Teams. So we have a list of users, and um, there is an ad additional field here. Oh, here is a typo. Uh, and uh, this, this field um, contains an ID of the team that users belongs to. We assume that a um, user can belong to only one team. So uh, then we have a list of teams. That team can have some metadata. And it has also a list of users that are in that team. And that structure is for a reason, because we want to quickly know which users are in the team. And we also want to quickly know and easily know uh, what is the team that, that user belongs to, given a user. And with that structure, we can do that simply and quickly. The problem is similar to what we, all had, what we already seen, uh, because here is obviously a duplication. Here are the users, and uh, here are the teams. So it's very easy, very easy <coughs> to generate an inconsistent state here, so that, for example, we r remove a user, and we forget to remove it from this user's list in a particular team. So what, do what can we do about it? Uh, we can remove uh, the user's list, and uh, it should fix the problem. However, we no longer can quickly find the particular users that are in a particular team. So here comes IDX again, and um, the option multi-true that is supposed to be there one day, and uh, <laughs> that will potentially solve that problem uh, when I have a free evening again. <clears throat> so, uh, with this functionality, uh, one could uh, use idx.get and pass uh, the, the idx key as we did with a nick before. And here we can uh, retrieve all users that uh, belong to a particular team. So the multi-true would mean that um, a key can apply not only to one user, but, uh, but to a whole bunch of them. Uh, so 
let's see how this would look like for removing a team. So we can do IDX delete. Uh, so if, if the teams were also IDX, we can just remove a team from there. And we can remove all the users that we are, that are um, supposed to be removed because they are in the team. This is also, this is of course some business logic choice. We could, for example, assign them another team or, or do whatever. Uh, but uh, let me stick to that <coughs> and that scenario and uh, see what happens if we actually forgot to delete users that are uh, in a particular team. In this case, uh, when we only delete, delete the team, our state is also inconsistent because there, is, there are a bunch of users that uh, are in the team that doesn't exist. So that basically means we will have, uh, we'll ha we're having a bug and it will show up some one time at some point. We precisely don't know when and it, it may be tra hard to track down when it actually happens. <coughs> and actually IDX is not able to help us with that because it only looks on, at a single collection because uh, yeah, it's about that. Uh, so to solve that problem, you would need something that looks at many collections, that wraps them, and provides an API <coughs> that uh, would uh, make it possible to specify relationships uh, that are between our collections and uh, how, they, how they are correlated, um, how they are, wh what is their meaning, actually. And then um, that structure would uh, would assure us that we are not making any changes that um, uh, change our state to an inconsistent shape. So it basically would uh, uh, guard, uh, would be a kind of a guard that when we remove, uh, for example, a team, that we won't leave users that are in that team in, a consist in uh, that situation that they are in an unknown team. Uh, so <coughs> As I mentioned, IDX cannot do that. So what would do that? So let me uh, take a look again. Let us take a look again at the code we, we already seen. So we had this uh, multi-index put on uh, users uh, called team. And then we retrieved users by passing a key. And uh, does it uh, remind something to you? So I don't expect an answer. I already have it. Uh, so <coughs> what about this? So <laughs> it's, a, it's a SQL query. Uh, it basically does the same thing. So am I suggesting that we should use SQL or uh, some kind of ORM on our internal state of the process? Uh, well, I think it would be quite overkill, and we shouldn't do that. Uh, but we for sure can take inspiration from relational databases and other uh, tools that organize the data and apply them even to the state of a process that we have within a single yeah, Elixir process so that we can make sure that our data is um, consistent, uh, is, uh, with, that we don't land into a state uh, that um, then may, co may cause some bugs or problems. So basically that's it. <coughs> the IDX is available on my GitHub and uh, on the Hex. Uh, are there any questions? Yes? What underlying like, data structure is? Uh, what uh, like underlying data structure is actually EDX using? It's map, of course. OK. <laughs> yeah. So it's basically doing uh, what I showed before that is problematic, but it does it automatically. OK. Thank you. You don't have, you don't have like constant time search because the maps in Elixir will use like logarithm time. To yeah, to of course. Uh, that's like almost constant time. <laughs> Because it's actually a logarithm of uh, the size of the key. So provided that the key is a couple of bytes and you take a logarithm out of this, in practice, is no worse than a constant time. But in, ter in theory, yes.
Okay, uh, no more questions, so thanks a lot and see you around.